boy, do we have a large announcement dropping tomorrow. This will be the, the project of our company's lifetime. Uh, I can't wait to share it with y'all. So make sure you are subscribed to the channel. Make sure you're following us and myself on Twitter for it. Uh, it will involve you guys and hopefully it'll get y'all really fucking excited. As excited as I am for it. But we are focused on today's video. In today's video, we're looking at five running backs that are currently getting drafted as RB3s or later. So like RB25, right? Because it'd be 12, 12. Those are the top 24, those are the RB1s and 2s, later than that. So they're the RB25 or later that I think have legitimate arguments to finish the year as an RB1, as a top 12. Might stretch it out a little bit to like top 15 for some of these guys, but legit arguments to finish as a top 12, 15 running back in fantasy this year. And again, when I make these videos, okay, I do not ever make these with a list of like, if the guy in front of them gets hurt, okay? Because I bet a bunch of people probably make these videos and then put like Tony Pollard on it. Tony Pollard has a 0% chance of being an RB1 if Ezekiel Elliott is playing, right? I'm not putting Alexander Madison to Dalvin Cook. Like those guys, it's a waste of time putting them on this list. So we are not going that direction. The next direction we are going is downstairs because we're going to tuck our shirts in. I'm going to stop yelling. And we're going to eat. <laughs> First guy up on this list is Mr. A.J. Dillon, currently being drafted as the RB25 Green Bay Packers. This was a top 10 scoring offense last year. So you're talking about a big dude who's going to play a lot on early downs. This is the number five graded ranked offensive line per PFF. They dropped their rankings for offensive lines going into 2022, and they have the Green Bay Packers as number five. The first time really acclimating himself into the offense, he bested Aaron Jones in goal line carries 10 to 6. So that's already his role. So you're talking about the goal line back in a top 10 scoring offense with the number five ranked offensive line. I expect to see both of these running backs on the field together a ton. So they have to make up for Devonta Adams leaving somehow and is going to be through this nucleus of running backs. They just simply don't have the power at wide receiver to do it through them. So I, I we're going to see a lot of Aaron Jones in the slot and out wide and a ton of A.J. Dillon from the bike field. I can easily see a world where A.J. Dillon carries the ball 230 times, catches 30 passes, and then scores double-digit touchdowns because of his goal line role. And that's where Aaron Jones is healthy. I can see it happening. RB25 with RB1 upside. The RB26 is Miles Sanders. I haven't really spoke much on Miles Sanders. It's, you know, I'm not really allowed to speak on it on my channel, apparently, from, fuck you guys. RB26, Miles Sanders. When we look at Miles Sanders, it's hard to actually know what he is as a running back. In a different world, in a different situation, is he a, an elite fantasy running back? Is he never that? The only thing we can do is look at the situation he is in going into this year. And while I've made the argument that the positive touchdown regression for Miles Sanders seems a little bit silly, right? He didn't score last year. So naturally, he has to score this year. He only had five goal line carries last year. However, when he was healthy, he missed time last year. When he was healthy, he was the goal line back. He saw the lion's share of the goal line opportunities when he was on the field. It just didn't amount to a lot of them because Jalen Hurts had like 15 of them. And these other running backs did not actually play that big of a role on the goal line when Miles Sanders was healthy. Problem is, like most teams don't have a guy taking 15 goal line carries at the quarterback position. So that hurts him. But if he does get more goal line carries, if they just happen to say, okay, instead of this play, we're going to do a quarterback draw, we'll do a running back draw or running back handoff. Those will probably go to Miles Sanders. And there might be more opportunities there because this offense is going to be better, right? They bring in A.J. Brown. There's no way they can get worse. And we want to talk about the PFF offensive line rankings. They ranked the Philadelphia Eagles number one going into this year. So you're talking about the, the favorite to get early down work here in Philly on an improved offense behind a wonderful offensive line who gets the majority of the goal line work when he's there. Okay, we know he's athletic. We know he can catch passes. He is super explosive. Like he's ripped off plenty of 40, 50, 60, 80 yard runs in his small NFL career sample size. We know that's part of his game. Jordan Howard is gone. And I love Kennedy Brooks at Oklahoma. But objectively, look at the situation. He's an undrafted free agent at running back. So it's probably not going to happen for him as much as I like him. So it's Boston Scott. It's Kenneth Gainwell, both of which are whatever in the grand scheme of competing with Miles Sanders. So I think Sanders does have this situation that I was probably prior overlooking how good it actually was for him. So Miles Sanders is a guy, of course, the risks are involved. That's why he's the RB26 right now. 
but he, he certainly has RB1 upside. Next up on this list, we got Chase Edmonds at running back 37. So we're dipping into the RB4 range now. And I hadn't put much thought into this Miami Dolphins backfield until a question came up on the live stream mock draft that we did on Saturday. We do a live stream mock draft on this channel every Saturday. So make sure that you are subscribed. You got notifications running to join us. You can ask me any questions you want while we're mock drafting. This new coaching staff really vividly clearly wants an entire new regime at running back, right? They said it very loud and clear by bringing in Chase Edmonds, Raheem Mostert, and Sony Michelle. right? Like, how many teams bring in three new running backs in an offseason? Very, very few. They're getting rid of all the running backs that they had on the, uh, on the previous roster. It makes it very clear that Chase Edmonds got the most money out of those running backs, by far. Lines up that he should get the most touches in this backfield. And they're going to be valuable touches because we know Chase Edmonds. We know Chase Edmonds is a great pass catching running back. And on top of that, we know the other two that are going to be involved, Sony and Raheem Mostert, are horrible at, at catching passes. Borderline cannot catch the actual fucking ball. Mostert has 34 career catches in seven years. Sony has 47 career catches in four years. So you're talking about 11 years worth of playing and 81 catches. What happens outside of like the third down work? I. I don't know. Objectively, I really don't fucking know. Is he the favorite to get goal line work? Probably not, but it definitely ain't Raheem Mostert. Is he the favorite to get early down work? Not sure, but he should get a lot of it considering he is the highest paid running back in this backfield. So Chase Edmonds is going to be the third down guy. He should catch a ton of passes. We've seen Miles Gaskin have games of, you know, five, six, seven receptions. And I could see Chase Edmonds having a very similar role. And we saw Miles Gaskin have games of, you know, 18, 20, 22 plus carries. So I could see games where Chase Edmonds certainly pops off. And if he just continues to prove himself and get better and better as the season progresses, he will have more of an opportunity than Cliff Kingsbury ever gave him in Arizona. So Chase Edmonds is a guy getting drafted as an RB4 that I'm kind of on board with as an upside play this year. The fourth guy on this list, and I can't believe I'm putting him on this list, but it's Ronald Jones at running back 41. I know this is going to sound ridiculous, but I can see a world where he is the lead back in this offense like halfway through the season. I think Ronald Jones is just straight up a better running back than Clyde Edwards Hilarious. I could see Ronald Jones being the bigger back in this backfield, so getting a lot of goal line work here in Kansas City in an offense that's obviously amazing, and they're going to have to score a lot because they're going against their divisional opponents that are fucking awesome and are going to score a lot as well, okay? So... RB1, probably a stretch here. Top 12, probably a stretch. But I still think there's a lot of upside here, man. And he's going to have a big impact on early downs in Kansas City. And if you're a guy, you know, I've talked about this many times about like having upside as a, as a runner. And in fantasy, if you don't catch passes, it's very hard to have upside. But if you don't catch passes, a lot of that can be supplemented by getting goal line work as well as, well as having a really strong offensive line. We've seen really good runners succeed in fantasy despite not catching passes if they have a really good offensive line because the biggest teller of being, you know, of being an efficient running back of having a five yards per carry mark or higher or whatever is usually having a really good offensive line. And going back to PFF's rankings, Kansas City is top 10. They're number nine overall in offensive line rankings heading into this year. It was a revamp last year. We're starting to see it come to fruition. Now you're getting a guy who might be the early down back who could get a lot of goal line work. He could score double digit touchdowns this year just by kind of being in that offense. I don't think that's Clyde's role anymore. So it very well could be Ronald Jones's role. And the last guy on this list, he was actually before a few of the other guys. I've just talked about him like seven times in the last few videos. Rashad Penny at running back 35. I don't think there's like a huge argument to be made here. He was literally the RB1 overall in fantasy over the last five weeks of last year. It will be his starting job to start the season and Maybe Kenneth Walker plays a big role down the stretch. Maybe he doesn't. I don't really know. But Chris Carson, I would be shocked if he comes back this year before like week 10 or plays at all. It's Rashad Penny's role to be the starter. He was awesome down the stretch last year. I don't need to argue why he can be an RB1 because he's already been an RB1 in Seattle, obviously with Russell Wilson there, but he was good enough as a runner on his own right to show us that he could do it regardless of what's going on around him. So Rashad Penny, RB35, you're getting him as a back end running back three. I think the the upside is obviously there for him to kind of blast off if he can hold on and keep the starting role there in Seattle because this is going to be a very, very run heavy offense. Didn't catch a ton of passes, but if they're going to give him 20 to 25 carries a game, which I expect them to lean on him super fucking heavily because they, they're not going to be able to throw the ball with Geno Smith under center, it's going to be a Rashad Penny 
offense. So we have five running backs getting drafted as RB3s that I think have RB1 upside this year. We had A.J. Dillon, we have Miles Sanders, we have Rashad Penny, Chase Edmonds, and Ronald Jones. A nice mix of pass catchers, a nice mix of really shitty running backs that are in good situations, all that kind of stuff. But you see a commonality between them. They're either pass catching passes or they have a really good offensive line in a good offense. Start to understand the themes of the good players you can draft in fantasy football. Please subscribe to the channel because tomorrow, 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 big things coming. All right, subscribe, hit the thumbs up button, and I'll see you tomorrow.